tēnā tātou. Uh, tēnei te mihi atu kia koutou katoa, te whare. Um, kia oku hoa, oku whanaunga. Um, oku hoa, mahi tēnā koutou. Uria hau o tauranga moana, he whanaunga hau o tēnei rangatira. Ko Bentham, uh, who I think is probably related to about 90% of the people in this room. Um, but I confuse everybody. I am from Tauranga. I am an ohia and a cooker, but I, I throw people off my scent with my Ken surname. So two hoi people always think that I've married and... Sorry, I haven't. Um, but more power. But uh, my father was um, a whāngai to uh, the Ken's whānau rua tāhuna. So for all the two hoi in here, that explains my surname. Uh, for the rest of you, yeah, I am from Tauranga, but I've lived down here for around about nearly 20 years. Um, probably l nearly longer than I've lived in my own hometown in Tauranga. So I'm Ngai Te Rangi, Ngā Te Ranginui, Ngā Te Pukinga. And I'm going to be sharing some pages from my playbook. So when the Bauti people started hitting me up about, you've got to do a session, you've got to do a session, I thought I was just going to be sitting on the couch. I didn't realise I was actually going to do a stand-up like this. Um, I freaked out when he shared the agenda going, poor white cans, the tikanga in the art space or something. Oh my God, <laughs> I'm not a tikanga expert, man. This is going to have all of the people after me. So we re-evaluated re and I said, the things that I can share are my playbook. Now, in Pākehā realms, I talk about two playbooks. I talk about my open playbook that I quite happily share, and my closed playbook, which is more of the subterranean, subterfuge style stuff that I will do in order to get what I want. Um, I never share my closed playbook because I don't want people to adapt to me like the Borg and put it back in my face, weaponized. So I've always held it close to my heart, or I share it with people with no phones present, no cameras present. But I realize that for this session, that is not the time to be closed. Today I'm going to be sharing the open playbook. And I wanted to develop this particularly for two of my staff that are here, um, Tia and Millie, who have come on board working for me, uh, well, working for managers who work for me in Te Papa. Uh, they're two young, brilliant, bright young Māori women who are dedicated to their mahi, dedicated to storytelling, and dedicated to communities. And so I wanted to pull together something that I thought would be benefit to them. Um, because I see quite a lot of King Kong governance people in this room. And I think it'd just be like telling you fellas how to suck eggs. So um, these are the things that I've learned in my journey. Hapoi. I'm an emotional person. That is probably the big thing I've had to come to terms with. It, I, I, it comes from my whakapapa. We are led by our emotions. We are led by our puku. We are led by what the Modi is telling us. And sometimes that feels incredibly counterintuitive when you're in an environment where expressing your emotions is frowned upon. It's seen as if you've lost control. You've, you you, you kind of you, you stay professional. So one of the things that's really difficult to reconcile for young professionals going into governance is the control. But I'm going to start here with a couple of four key points that were really relevant to me on my governance journey, which I'm only about six years in. Anyway, SpongeBob. Stay with your core. I've heard this come up in quite a few of the speakers. Uh, my belief is that your self-awareness, your self-awareness of yourself is your superpower going into governance. And what's your origin story? What is the thing that triggers your superpower? Um, there are th three things here that really kind of are quite important to me in terms of what, my super, my, what I believe my superpower tells me. One is that I know I'm emotional. Uh, great empathy. I like to understand what people are feeling. What are you thinking? How are you doing? Why are you crying? Why are you angry? What have I done? Um, and then usually my, I have to figure out what my response is to them in the moment over the table with a whole lot of invisible power dynamics floating around our heads. The thing that I've learned is that it's important to be emotional. That's my gift. But also my responsibility is to master it. I have to master my emotions at the table so that I control the emotions, the emotions do not control me. So it means that I can bring what feels the core to the work, but uh, it means I am not beholden to them. It means I'm riding that horse, that horse is not riding me. The other thing is understanding what drives you, 
what's going to help you in your time as a board member? So normally your charter or your constitution will dictate or determine your time that you're going to be serving, usually around about three years, sometimes on Māori boards forever. But um, what is going to help you, to drive you, to fuel you for that time that you're going to be sitting at that table? Because it's going to get hard. You're going to get hoha with the people around you. You're going to feel hoha with sometimes a lack of motivation or a lack of advance. So you have to always come back going, I, th I think it's almost what Guy was talking about, what, what is the value that you believe you add? But don't think of it transactionally. Think about it as in that thing that you nurture in your belly that you know this is my goodness that I can bring. And this is how I'm going to express it at the table. Um, and sometimes it takes a while to figure out how that comes out in your soul at the table. It's, I, I give myself a good year going into a new governance circumstance to understand everything that's happening, both on the table and invisibly. Um, the other thing is moving between sweet and sour, between sniper and shotgun. So be unpredictable in your predictability, be predictable in your unpredictability. So sometimes when you want to bring a real gun critique Sometimes a little bit of kind of bold talking, some truth telling. Move between sweet and sour. Don't always be sour. Nobody, nobody going to be picking that sour fruit in the fruit basket. So move between those. Move between the poles. Be sweet, be sour. Be sweet, be sour. Um, be unpredictable in how you're going to come out with your critique. Um, and I think that just makes, keeps people on their toes. It means they don't immediately shut down, build a resistance to what you're saying. Um, so move between sweet and sour. The other thing is shotgun and sniper. Shotgun, boom, break three doors. Yeah, look at that, power. Yeah, that's great when you want immediate um, kind of gratification, immediate advance, you want to address what's right now. But sometimes you need to move into sniper and you need to be focusing on something that is miles or years in the future. So try and figure out your skills to be able to move between those two, to be bold and break down a door but also to peek at something from a long distance way and maintain your focus on it. When you become adept at those, and I'm not adept at those just yet, um, when you become adept at those, I believe that you'll become a much more effective um, governance player. Cup by and zoom it out. All right, my next one. Rage quitting never pays off. Well, it might pay off if you want to press that nuclear button once, but you don't want that to be your brand. Um, stay classy, Fano, and I learned this from my, my mother. I was in a very, very difficult um, governance situation. I went into a, a board, all Pākehā, all talking about their holiday homes. Where's your holiday, Pōwai? Where's your holiday home? Uh, it's called Mum's House in Tauranga. That's where my holiday home is. Completely feeling like I was out of my depth. I did not have any social connections to these people. I had no work relationships with these people, but I was on the board with them and I was determined to stick it out. Around about two years into my tenure, it was becoming incredibly uncomfortable. I had a hostile relationship with one of the board members and I was ready to rage quit. Um, the thing with rage quitting is that it feels real good in the moment. Oh, your puku's telling you, throw in the towel and I'm off. Somebody, somebody wants me, maybe not you, but I don't care. Um, rang up my mother who has got a long, 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 long history in governance, um, doing it for the love, dedicated to the service of our people. What should I do with these Pākehās that don't like me? Um, I was going, well, what do you want to do? I was like, I want to quit, and I'll tell them, get back. Um, and she goes, well, you can quit, but don't quit right now. Quit in six months' time. And I went, oh, okay, why, why is that? She goes, you should leave ice cold, don't quit hot. So what she means by that is that don't quit because your emotions are telling you in that moment to quit because all that happens is that they've managed to push you off the table and now you've got a real dodgy governance record on your CV. Like, ooh, why did you leave? Ooh, why, is this per why did this person leave your board? Oh, rage quit. Mm, okay, not coming on this board. So you really want to make sure that you can um, keep it classy, keep it, keep it light. But you can leave. Just don't leave because of that particular blow up. Talk about it later, six months later. Oh, I've left because I've got work. I've got, I've got stuff I need to balance. This is closed playbook stuff. This is stuff that I wouldn't have told that board when I was resigning, saying I've given you six months notice. But um, sometimes you need to cut your losses and just get, because it's like, oh, why am I wasting my way to I here? Um, 
So don't quit hot. I've heard a lot of people say, uh, do your readings, stay prepped, know the rules, read the constitution, read the charter, read all of the information, read the strategy, even if you're about to go in and redo the strategy, know all of those pillar documents within the board's remit. Um, but especially do your readings. Uh, there's nothing more infuriating than being at a table with someone who you can tell they haven't done their readings. They're not asking the right questions. They're not listening to the court at all. And there are so many people that have worked so hard to get those papers to the table. So, uh, yeah, respect and honour the work by um, paying it back, by being prepared. The other thing, which is, again, potentially me coming into Pākehā spaces, is get to know the, the other board members, but do it out of strategic empathy. So strategic empathy means that you don't want to get to know them because you're really nice. You want to get to know them because you need to know what your common hidden agendas are, the things that are driving them, the things that are affecting them, because in that you'll be able to understand how we're going to actually create something and collaborate together. You'll understand the things that are hobbling them, the things that they're irritated by, the kind of work that, 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 that might kind of swerve them off target. It's called strategic empathy. It's getting to know them, but with an intent to actually understand so you can build something rather than just trying to be the agony aunt at the table. So that is something I learned from an FBI negotiator. That was really cool uh, and really useful. Okay. Um, remember, you're a paving in the path. You, you, the, one of the hard things about being a governance person, I think, is that you're immediately lifted into this um, very... Uh, you're looked after really well. You kind of go VIP. You go VIP. Uh, you become quite centred. People centre around you, around you coming in to do the meetings, around your decisions. Um, but my thing is to, I suppose, to fuck to yourself a little bit. Remember that you are there to perform a service. Um, and the other thing is that you do not bear the burden of all the change that's required to happen right then. You don't have to be all the change. Sometimes you are a contributor to the change. So I like to think for myself like being, as part, being part of a, a kind of a line of continuity where I might do something, I'm going to pass it on to somebody who's going to advance it a little bit more, then they'll pass it on, do it a little bit more, and through that process we'll see the change we want to make. So this gives me a little license to be easier on myself, so I'm not going to be too harsh and severe to myself that I'm not seeing the impact that I really want to see right then. It also means that I have a responsibility as I exit a governance situation to figure out how I can make it better for another Māori person going in after me. So I tend to have a habit, especially going into Pākehā boards, where I might try and get more Māori seats and as part of my exit, like, oh, I think, you know, about a year out, oh, I think we should be thinking about, you know, we need a mana whenua seat, or we need the seat, we need the seat. Uh, and because I've gotten to know everybody and they all like me because of strategic empathy, um, they tend to come on board with it. If you just hammer and, and cajole and go sour, go sweet, and you build that argument, and then by the time you exit, hopefully, you've actually created another seat that somebody can go into and advance your work. So you see yourself as part of a part of the Marae chain gang, just passing plates around. All right, sometimes I've already covered you, sometimes you have to cut your losses, and there's nothing wrong with that. Failure is not a big fail. Sometimes it just means that our ideas are not ready for that space. The time is not ready for us. So you just, oh, like, this was nice. I'm just giving you a six-month resignation. I'm going to probably leave. It's been lovely, but I don't feel like I'm able to give the, the value that you need. Um, and you walk. But you take that very seriously, you take that decision very seriously. And the last thing uh, which a lot of us have talked about, which is related to that notion of continuity, is the mokopuna clause, which as far as I'm aware was coined by Wayne Ngata, who was inspired by some Danish academics talking about long-term intergenerational planning. And this is, a, I think a lot of the speakers have talked about this as well, about our requirement to think of ourselves as the people who are planting the seed for the tree that's going to shelter someone when we're not there. So we think about the projection into the future and what benefit we want to give to those people who are not there yet. And in particular, with critical issues around climate change, around inequity, around racism, around our people still being at the bottom rung, I think this is really, really important. Be part of the change. You don't have to be the martyr of the change, but try and plant the seed that somebody else is going to shelter under in 40 years' time. Okay, and last one. Zoom out, Bart. 
Doing all right? Yeah? Okay, that's good, that's good. Oh, these, these, these after lunch speaking slots are always a bit tough. All right. Last one, though. We're almost there, Fano. Um, learning is everywhere. Uh, I, I, I actually feel like you and I are probably a little bit kindred spirit, Joe. Uh, a lot of the stuff you were saying, I was like, yes, yes, you covered it off. Um, there is a lot of talk I saw on the questions and in some of the chat around imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome, shoot. Imposter syndrome is a bit of a mish. Although it's also a very un an inconvenient label for a whole raft of emotions for us. It's not just imposter syndrome. There are other things around hostility and racism. Those aren't imposter syndrome. Um, but what is ultimately, I think, on us is to become, as I believe someone said earlier, you might have, be, un be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Be comfortable with being the nerd that doesn't quite fit in. Go back to those 80s high school comedies. The nerd wins. So the odd fish, the odd bod will get there. I mean, I am a classic nerd. I think that is, again, I'm emotional. I'm an emotional nerd. I'm an emotional nerd. Um, so get used to being uncomfortable because that actually means that you are meant to be there. If you were comfortable, I think you would, I would start to fret that I was starting to move into the system that a lot of my people were not admitted into. So I think the fact that you are uncomfortable, that you feel really new, that you feel really raw, you should lean into that as if that's your power. Because the kind of um, the seduction of power going up to these governance positions can actually fool you sometimes into thinking that you are admitted but you forget about the people who aren't. So stay uncomfortable. Observe, observe, observe. I go into these different board situations, steering group situations, like that fella right there, Mr. David Attenborough, or Sir David Attenborough, to observe people in their natural habitat. I want to understand the living habits, the breeding habits, the eating habits of all of these very unusual animals. And then I'm going to take that information back to my own people, go, look at this. This is how they work. So, go into the role of the observer. And the observer stays slightly detached. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. And last thing, I actually want to pay a mihi to my beautiful friend Francine, who strong-armed me into doing this. When she, uh, she rang me up, she says, you've got to come and do my thing, you've got to come and do my thing. I'm like, what do you mean? What's your thing? My Māori Governance Summit. I was like, I'm not going into that. I'm not going into that. You've got, you've got Joe Williams talking at that. Oh my God, I'm just going to look like a complete fool. I've only been doing this for six years. Just, they want to listen to you. When somebody backs you, it helps you back yourself. <laughs> Thank you, Francine. Because she backed me, I came into this going, oh, well, Francine thinks I can do it. Then I can do it. So my, I think my last words are probably to Tia and to Millie that I back you, this space is going to be yours. This is a space we're trying to make for all of you, because somebody made space for me. That's me. Kia ora.